Right, hello and welcome to another episode of 90 Day Fiancé on Arthur TV. Today's episode is from the new 90 Day Fiancé series, Before the 90 Days. And today's couple are 54 year old Big Ed and his 23 year old Filipino fiancé to be, Rose. Yup, that is a 31 year age gap. Also, Big Ed has been divorced for 29 years, has a 29 year old daughter who does not approve of the relationship, and the couple have never actually met in real life because they met on social media. Honestly, this entire video is an absolutely wild ride from start to finish. It starts off so bizarrely, moves on to being cringe, gets controversial, and then goes rapidly downhill. Like, really downhill. But before we get into any of the serious stuff, we're starting off with probably the most bizarre introduction in 90 Day Fiancé history. In a few days, I'm getting ready to get on a plane and go meet Rose, the love of my life, for the very first time. You know, something about the phrase meet the love of my life for the first time doesn't really fill me with confidence. I'm super excited because I also bought a ring and I plan to ask Rose to marry me. I think I might have been a little bit distracted by him saying that he was going to propose to a girl that he's never met before. But why is he walking around in a kimono? And is he putting what I think he's putting in his hair? Since I met Rose, I, I want to look young for her. So I have been dyeing my hair and it irritates my scalp. So I found out that mayonnaise makes it smoother and less dry. I thought it was mayonnaise. Honestly, where did TLC find these weapons? You know, I've actually heard of people using mayonnaise hair masks before, so I'm not going to say anything on that. But why is he doing it on national TV? And why is he using a spatula? I'm self-conscious of my physical appearance because Rose is 31 years younger than me. You know, it's a shame these guys didn't meet when they were younger. I actually checked out Ed's Instagram and he wasn't a bad looking bloke when he was younger. Obviously, Rose wasn't even born when he was her age, but you know what I mean. Now, unfortunately, he has no neck and kind of looks like a mix between Danny DeVito and Humpty Dumpty. But if I was him, I wouldn't worry about it. I don't think she's with him for his looks. I smell like an egg salad sandwich, but it really, really works. I just want to look young for Rose. I feel like I can smell the egg salad sandwich through my screen. You know, I actually kind of rate this guy. I don't really want to see him get hurt. But with a Filipino girlfriend that's 31 years younger than him that he's never even met before, I'm just not too confident. But I guess we're about to see. Next up, we're at the airport to watch the couple meet for the very first time. Will it be incredibly awkward? Will sparks fly? Will Rose be annoyed that Ed lied about his height? Well, we're about to find out. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. You know, when I first saw these clips of Ed putting mayo in his hair, I thought I had clicked on an Extreme Cheapskates video. If putting mayo in his hair really is the best option, then fair enough. But if he's just trying to save money, he should have used Pouch. It's a desktop Chrome extension that automatically applies the best voucher codes to your online checkouts on over 3,000 websites. So you never overpay when buying online. It's free, it's simple, it's got great reviews, and it only takes a couple of clicks to add. They also work with the best retailers in the UK to bring exclusive deals and offers only available to pouch users. So let's say, for example, you're browsing a men's grooming website looking for hair products and you come across something you like. It's a little pricey, but you still want to buy it. Well, when you click through to check out, Pouch will pop up to let you know that it's found vouchers for your basket. It will test the best codes and find you the best price. And there we go. It's that simple. We've got 22% off and save £12.32 at the click of a button. So yeah, it's really good. Check out Pouch using the link in the description and make sure you're getting the best deals for your online shopping. Right, so anyway, back to the video. Up next, we're at the airport in Manila, the capital of the Philippines, where Ed is about to meet Rose for the very first time. Oh my God. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Are you real? Oh my God, you're so real. You're so beautiful. Okay, oh good, my good. god. I love how she keeps looking him up and down like she has no idea how a human is built like this. It's kind of sad because he's so happy and you can tell she's just like, oh god, what have I signed up for? I wonder if she could smell the mayonnaise on him when they hugged. I'm beyond, beyond elated. I'm 
I'm so happy right now. I'm so very happy to see you. You promise? Yes. I'm so excited. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. <laughs> I couldn't find you. I was so worried. I'm like, I didn't think you were going to come. I mean, it's kind of cute. It's cringe, but it could be worse. She doesn't look too impressed by the way he looks, but other than that, she seems to be reacting pretty well. It was just like an out-of-body experience for me, because for three months, I FaceTime with her, and now I'm standing in front of her, and I really want to kiss Rose. I really do. But I want to make sure that she really likes me. You know what, I actually really rate this. Do you remember when we looked at Mike and Aziza and he was just being really pushy about sleeping with her? Like always bringing it up in conversation, always talking about how he can't wait to have babies with her. And it was just really uncomfortable because she just obviously wasn't interested. I mean, I don't think Rose is interested either, but it's nice to see Ed let her go at her own pace. That you. Uh... Mm. What? <laughs> <laughs> Am I what you expected? Do you like? I expected you are tall to me. But tall? Listen. More tall? You're short to me. <laughs> I thought if I told you I was the same height, maybe I would have a chance. Ah, uh, starting off on a lie is a terrible idea. You know, I don't even know why he's asking any of these questions in the first place. The long silence after he asks if she likes what she sees is just inevitable. She's obviously not with you for your looks. Just leave it. I see on pers in person, she he is really big. <laughs> big. <laughs> Bad shot. <laughs> Let me see. Are we the same? <laughs> Little. Poquito. Poquito. Un pequeño. Why is this guy speaking Spanish to a Filipino girl? I mean, I know Manila has historically Spanish influence, but still, it's so weird. Do you find me attractive? Attractive always. You. Always? Yeah. Okay. Well. Who you are? It's okay I, for me. What do you mean? I don't want to just be okay for you. I want to be, I want to be your man. Yeah, you're a man. You're my king. You my know? I'm her king. She's my queen. <laughs> oh, that's so cringe. You know, I can never understand how these guys don't read the social cues. Ed, you're four foot 11 and 90% of your body mass is in your belly. Relax, you're not going to get the ego boost you're looking for. <laughs> I love you. Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be the start of a great day. Great night. I now have faith in love again. I love you. Love you. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Big Ed and Rose went off to spend their first night together in a hotel. Rose conveniently fell asleep before Ed had finished brushing his teeth. So the pair fell asleep in separate beds. The next day, the pair go out onto the streets of Manila for a day of shopping. And this is where the problems begin. This is, this is crazy. I, li I like it, don't get me wrong. It's, it's just a lot to take in. So after finding out during their first night together that Rose doesn't own anything to sleep in, the first thing on the list is pajamas. Oh my God, pajamas. I think these are pajamas. The fact that Rose doesn't even have pajamas made me feel really sad. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get her pajamas. Oh, yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, pink. Yeah, nice. How much? 180. 180 pesos. Now bear in mind that 180 Philippine pesos is about three pounds or $3.50 if you're from America. Give me a wallet. You can't just grab from my wallet. <laughs> okay, I wanna see how much this is. I don't even, I don't even know how much this is. How much? 180? Awesome. Keep the change. No. Yeah. No? Keep the change. It's, it's, it's at 10 pesos. Thank you. Okay. See this. <laughs> I actually love his reaction when she says keep the change. Keep the change. It's, it's, it's at 10 pesos. Okay. You know what? I don't actually think this is as bad as it first looks. If you're quite clearly a tourist in a foreign country, waving around a wallet full of cash whilst you're trying to figure out a foreign currency probably isn't the best idea. I mean, it's a little rude given it's not her money, but 10 pesos is literally 17 pence, so it's really not that deep. I'm just in a swarm of hot, sweaty people. Right now, it's probably over 100 degrees. I'm sweating my ass off right now. Dress with you flowers. Wanna, oh, you want to buy a shirt with flowers? Yeah. Okay. You want this? Okay. 
Ah, that's a good excuse. Flowers to cover up the back sweat stains. Good thinking. Smart girl. Okay, so how much? 480, sir. 480, yeah, how much is that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not comfortable with um, Rose grabbing my money because that's not what you do. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's borderline, you know, inappropriate. You know, he's got a fair point here, but I think that the issue is a bit more deep-rooted than this. I think that Ed's unease is a symptom of a bigger problem because something else has been playing on his mind. And I already have questions about her sister because, you know, she asked me for money. Her sister texted me the other night. She basically said, you know, I need help. My store is going to close. And she's asking me for money. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to believe that this could just be a scam, but I don't know if Rose is in on it or not. Let's be real here, one way or another he's getting scammed, isn't he? I mean, she's not exactly with him for his chiseled jawline and flawless physique. And she's clearly not head over heels in love with him, so you've got to be asking yourself, why is she with him? Like most of the people on the show, I'm pretty sure it's for a visa. But, I don't know, can you really blame her? She probably just wants a better life for herself. It's basically an exchange masked by a fake relationship. He gets a young, good-looking wife and she gets a visa to a country she wants to live in. Unfortunately, just like real relationships, fake ones have their problems too. I know you're tired of me asking about your past and I don't want to do that anymore. I want to put it behind us. But I have a favor. What the favor? Oh God, people who bring up past relationships all the time just reek of insecurity. This isn't going to go well, is it? So there's a test that you can take. Yeah, you test me? No, yeah, a te it's, a, it's a test for, um, for, um, I don't know if you understand, it's um, STD, which is, um, I think it's a blood test, and they just test to see um, if you have, um, like, sexually transmitted disease. Oh, this is absolutely the worst way to go about this. You know, being like, hey, we're about to start a new relationship and I think we should both get tested to make sure we're being safe is absolutely fine. But he's basically just sat down and been like, take this STD test, you thought. No one is going to take that well. So that... So I was asking if you're willing to take that test, I'll never ask you a, a, an, another question about your past. I'm yeah. disappointed. Oh, she hit him with the I'm disappointed. I mean, of course she's disappointed. Imagine being told by a 4 foot 11 simp with no neck that you can't sleep with him unless you take an STD test. It's so disrespectful, I'd be absolutely livid. On the upside though, she doesn't have to do anything with him until she takes the test, so she's probably kind of relieved. You want to test me? I, I feel you would not trust me. Okay. I feel offended. I don't mean to offend you, but every time I asked you about your Facebook friends, Every time I asked you about past relationships, you don't want to talk about it. So I'm not comfortable. To be fair, who really does want to talk about their past relationships all the time when they're about to start a new one? It's weird how he's so concerned about her past relationships when he was actually unfaithful in his first marriage. I mean, he's got all of these concerns, but he literally cheated on his first wife. I'm not comfortable. No, I'm not. I want her to take the STD test because I want to know for myself that I can trust her and that, you know, she's not someone that, that sleeps around. Uh, this is such an incel mindset. She could have been safe with literally 500 partners or unsafe with just one. The test results would mean absolutely nothing. I feel like he's just projecting his trust issues onto her. And it's just so hypocritical because he hasn't been truthful himself. He hasn't told her about being unfaithful in his marriage. He told her he was 5'2 and not 4'11 before they met. And he knows she wants to have another kid and he secretly wants a vasectomy. Trust just is a big part of a relationship. So inevitably, things take a turn for the worse when Ed pushes Rose even further on her past relationship relationships, including her relationship with the father of her four-year-old son, Prince. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know where, where Prince's um, dad is. And I'm sorry, you know, I'm, I'm not going to spend want, the rest of my life with somebody I can't trust. You want to know who's the father of Prince? It's in my own, her life. Her life. It's her own, her baby, her own wife. So I never talked to her. It never. Never, ever.
All right, now that I think is fair enough. If I was him, I'd be pretty curious to find out who the father is too, so I reckon that's pretty reasonable. But she's pretty upset, so I don't think she can take much more. Nung nagkakilala kami ng tatay ng anak ko, binata siya. So nung nagkahiwalay kami, doon siya nagkaroon ng bagong pamilya. Matagal na kaming hiwalay. Now, it been not talking to each other. And that was four years ago, right? Talk to me. Talk to me about what, what's happened in the last four years. What is actually wrong with this guy? His girlfriend is visibly upset after talking about her heartbreak with the father of her child. And he's just there like, okay, good, good. Tell me more. I, I have but, uh, two boyfriends. I, it's hurt to me. So I, I live, I live. I don't have any voice anymore with that's all. That's, this is all I wanted was what you just said. That's right there. That's all I wanted. I actually cannot believe that was his reaction. That's all I wanted. Like, oh yeah, all I wanted was to hear that you had your heart broken multiple times and as a result, haven't been sleeping around. It's so weird. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier. It's so obvious that he doesn't actually care about her. He cares more that she's only dated a couple of guys in the last few years than he does about everything she's been through. Listen, Ed, I'm sorry to break it to you, but whether it's been one guy or a thousand, your one inch wonder is always gonna be the smallest she's ever had. Okay. I don't want to talk to you because you not understand me. Well, hello. I don't speak Tagalog, please. Rose, we're getting somewhere. Please. Well, guys, this is what happens when you project your own issues onto a new relationship. Rose has had enough and she's going to stay at a hotel by herself for the night. What it's worth, I'm sorry. Ugh, oh, see, he didn't even put in half the effort apologizing or consoling her as he did obsessing about her history. This is not gonna be an easy way back. What just happened? I don't know. But I do not believe in love. Oh, that's so sad. Heartbreak for Ed. Well, that is unfortunately the latest on Ed and Rose. So if you want to see what happens next, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss part two. As always, until then, if you want to keep up with the channel, the links to my Twitter, Instagram, and social media will be down below. If you enjoyed today's video, feel free to drop a like. And as I said before, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next episode. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.